Hello, hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are watching this live or on the rebroadcast, thank you so much for joining me today. I would like to introduce myself for In the Word Wednesday. Wednesdays in the Word. That's what we are doing today. Good morning, good afternoon. I see that Daniel's already on. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Today, we are talking about vision. Vision. That's right. We are talking about vision. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me. Vision. We need to be a people of vision. Hello, ladies that have just come in the room. Thank you so much for joining with me. Hey, hey, hey. How are you, Daniel? Thank you so much for being in. We're talking about biblical vision today. Now, of course, if we're talking about biblical vision, then that means that we are talking about vision from a from a spiritual point of view and not from a physical point of view. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with having eyes to see, and we also need ears to hear, but we also need to be able to do that from a spiritual point of view, and that's what we are doing today. Let me take a moment to introduce myself and to also invite you to the location. I am located at present time at Carver Memorial Presbyterian Church, which is at 830 25th Street in Newport News, Virginia. If you happen to be in the local area, we invite you to come on down and sit with us in the chapel and do this live. We would love to have you in the chapel with us. If you're not able to, that's okay. Thank you so much for joining me. If it's on Periscope or Twitter, if it's Facebook or YouTube, if it's Apple TV or Roku, thank you so much for sharing in this time with me. Hey, Pastor, how you doing? The Rev Speaks is in the scope. He is pastor of this beautiful church of ours. And on his behalf, again, I invite you to come to our church. Not only are we doing Wednesday in the Word, but we also have Saturdays where we're doing a Daily Dose to Destiny. You would follow uh, Minister uh, uh, Kenny Lucas. He is Luke 249, I believe it is. Our pastor does a thought, a daily thought, and you can find him at The Rev Speaks. And of course, you can always come down and visit the church on Sundays for 11 a.m. worship. I am, just to give you a brief synopsis of who I am, my name is Dr. Angela Butts-Chester. I'm a pastoral counselor and Christian life coach in the beautiful cities of downtown Long Beach, as well as in Hampton, Virginia. So what's a pastoral counselor? Not only am I an ordained minister, but I am also a mental health practitioner. As a psychotherapist, I can assist you with things dealing with mental health, like anxiety, depression, PTSD, but also with things dealing with your spiritual development and your spiritual health. So with that being said, let's go on and get started. If you would please, those three little dots down there that I like to refer to as our Perry Ushers, if you would tap them and share this out with your followers, with your audience, with your community, and if you aren't following me, please be sure to follow so that if we should get disconnected, you can easily find me again. So let's go on and get started. Here we go, everyone. Today, we are starting with Proverbs 29. Proverbs 39. Oh, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for inviting everyone. We are looking at Proverbs 29, 18. Proverbs 29, 18. 18. And I will be reading from the NIV, the New Living Translation, and the King James because this is a scripture that I think that many people are familiar with. So I want you to see how they overlap. So let's start with the King James Version, Proverbs 29, 18. And it reads, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he where there is no vision the people perish but he that keepeth the law happy is he the new living translation reads when people do not accept divine guidance they run wild but whoever obeys the law is joyful the niv reads where there is no revelation people cast off restraints but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's 
instruction. As you can see, there are so many powerful words, no matter which translation that you read. So when we're talking about vision, the one thing that we can see is if there is no vision, if you do not accept divine guidance, if there is no revelation, then you're going to have a problem. Why is it that you're going to have a problem? Because without that divine intervention, without that divine guidance, without that scriptural uh, vision, then you will have no restraint. You will run wild. The people will perish. And why will they perish? And I love how scripture, when we take it in bite-sized pieces, they so easily explains it all to us. Why will that happen? Or how can we keep that from happening? A very simple thing. If you simply keep the law, you will be happy. If you obey the law, you will be joyful. If you are blessed, then you will heed the wisdom's instruction. What does all of that mean? Now, we have to remember from a cultural perspective that the law, spiritual law, and the law of man, if you will, were one and the same from a cultural perspective for the Jews. They simply did what God instructed them to do. Mm -hmm. If man included a different law or there was a, a law for the city, then of course they obeyed that law. But first and foremost is the law that God has given. So when you live by God's law, when you live by the directives that God has given you, then usually you'll be covered by man's law anyway. Because if we notice, man's law is picking and choosing some of the best of God's laws anyway, yeah. right? Yeah. So when we look at that, we know we're not supposed to kill, we're not supposed to steal, we're not supposed to bear false witness. Now, last time I checked, all of those things were still laws yeah. that we have yeah. in today's society. So if we choose to live by the thing that God has given us, God's instruction, then we will be a happy person. Now, I wish that I could blend them all together, and I'm not claiming to be, you know, Zondervan or anybody like that, or a publisher, but it is so wonderful. Where there is no vision, the people perish without following and accepting divine guidance. Without this divine guidance, then the people have been cast off from God's grace and mercy. But blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction and obeys the law in a joy manner. Now, I don't know about you, but when we take all of those translations and we say it like that, that gets me a little yeah. fired up. And it lets me know that, wow, God already had a vision for his people. I've already explained to you and told you what it is that you need to do in order for you to live a happy and gracious life. Mm -hmm. Let's go on to our next scripture. And we are looking at John 15 John 15 verse 16 John 15 verse 16 and I'll be reading the New Living Translation John 15 16 and that says if you're reading this out of your Bible and in some of the online versions as well you will notice that this is in all red which means that Jesus is speaking John 15 16 says you didn't choose me I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. Mm -hmm. Now, the King James Version says that I have ordained you. So not only have I chosen you, but I have also ordained you. So what, do, what does it mean when we say ordain? I'm going to read it. We know that to ordain is a verb. So it is something that you do. It is not something that you are. Once you have been, you become, but first you must do. Do you, do you follow what I'm saying? You follow what I'm saying? Come on now. All right. So to ordain means to make someone a priest or a minister, to confer holy orders on, to order or to decree something officially to prescribe, to determine, and to put in order. That is what ordain means. So when we look at some synonyms and we say, well, maybe we're using the word a little haphazardly in today's society. So what does it mean to confer holy orders on, to appoint, to anoint, to consecrate, to install, to invest, 
and to induct. So if you understand the use of the word, this is one of the words that we're actually using in the most proper sense when we talk about someone or something being ordained. So when God says that you didn't choose me, but I chose you, when he says that you didn't ordain yourself, but I have ordained you, then it totally changes the understanding of this scripture. I have appointed you to go and produce fruit that will last. Not only am I telling you to go out into the world and to do something, but I am telling you to do a something that will last. Why is it important? Because Jesus knew that his time was coming. He knew that he wasn't going to be with the disciples forever and that the disciples needed to not only be under the shade of the tree that he was making, but that they also needed to take the seed which he was given, take that word that he was giving and plant it in other locations. That they needed to go and share the good news to those that had not been exposed to Holy Scripture. And when they did that, we go on and it says, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. So when we go as kingdom builders, when we go and we share the good news with other people, there is, using another scripture as an example, is that the iron starts to sharpen iron. When we go together and we share with those who do not know, we are also reminding ourselves of this goodness that God has given to us. When we remind ourselves of the goodness that God has given in us, because we need to read the scripture. We need to know what are we going to share with the people that we are visiting with today? Are we talking about salvation? Are we talking about redemption? Are we talking about love? And in our own research and, and familiarizing ourselves with scripture again, we become bubbled up. We become fired up again about what God is doing not only for us but for those that we are trying to touch so let's read it one more time I didn't you didn't choose me I chose you I appointed you to go and produce fruit that will last so that the father will give you whatever you ask for using my name one more verse verse 17 I command you to love each other other. Amen. I command you to love each other. And that's exactly what we need to do. You know, I know that we say it in uh, different ways and, and we go about, you know, making signs and memes and all of these things on social media. But we also need to remember that in doing that on social media is one thing. That's a virtual love. That's one way of sharing and letting people know. But we also need to do it in our realities. We need to do it in our day-to-day -day living. Because for some people, we may be the only examples of what they see of a Christian. We assume that people that we work with, the people that we see uh, out in our daily lives, know what Christianity is. We assume that they know who Jesus Christ is. But the more we talk to people, the more we evangelize to people, we find that many people have not grown up in a religious or even spiritual home for that matter. They simply grew up not even in a home that was atheist or agnostic. There simply was nothing. So they've never been exposed. So when you behave a certain way and then you say that you are a Christian, are you being a good representative of what it means to be a Christian? Are you displaying the vision that God has given to his people as far as what the church is supposed to be? Now, you guys that follow me, for, for the entrepreneurial scopes, you know, I talk about the types of people that we are supposed to have around us. And if you remember, there are two types of people that we mentioned that we need to have around us. And those are dreamers and visionaries, dreamers and visionaries. Now, again, how do we make the just position? How do we see that um, our spiritual life and our physical lives overlapped? You will have those who will dream dreams and you will have those who will have visions. This isn't a new concept. We know that from a Christian perspective mm -hmm. that dreams and visions are important. Mm -hmm. As we read our scripture, we know that it is because of a dream. We know that it is because of a vision. We know that it is because of a visitation, a divine visitation that we have. So many of the understandings and interpretations of scripture that we have to this day. Mm -hmm. People have been saved. People have been redeemed. We have been given the 
the glorious birth of our Savior because we understand the importance of visions and dreams. So let's go on. So we were looking at John 15. We're not going to go too much further. We're looking now at John 17. We're looking at John 17, 17. So it may even be on the same page for some of you, depending on the size of your Bible. But we're looking at John 17, 17. I'll be reading the NIV and the NLV, the New International Version and the New Living Translation. So here we go. John 17, 17 says, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. New Living Translation reads, make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth now i like how one version says it one way very simple mm -hmm. but just in case you didn't get it mm -hmm. i'm going to read the other version and it explains it mm -hmm. a little it's a little more wordy mm -hmm. but sometimes we need those words mm -hmm. right sometimes if there's a little bit of confusion then we're not able to actually understand the true blessing that we find in the scripture because mm -hmm. some words were missing for us mm -hmm. so we want to sanctify them by the truth what is the truth your word in parentheses, mm -hmm. oh Lord, mm -hmm. is truth. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Why is this important for kingdom builders? For kingdom builders, we need to understand that we are trying to sanctify something. We are trying to sanctify or to make holy. So you know me, can't stop being a therapist, got to be on the same page. Dr. Angela, what does it mean to sanctify? Mm -hmm. Sanctify is a verb. So here we go again. It means it is something that you do. It is not something that you are first. You have to do it in order to become it. And once you are it, you stay it. Amen? All right. So we are to set apart as or to declare holy, to consecrate, to make legitimate or binding by religious sanctification. To set apart or declare holy, to consecrate, to make legitimate or binding by religious sanctification. So what are some synonyms for this? To bless, to hallow, to make sacred, to dedicate to God, to approve, to vindicate, to endorse, to support, to permit, to allow, to authorize, to cleanse, to absolve to unburden and to redeem now once you understand that and you use all of those words right so let's let's just pick one let's just pick one all right we will unburden them how will you unburden them by the truth and what is the truth the truth is the word and what is the word the word of god all right so let's pick another one we will cleanse. How will you cleanse? By the truth. Let's pick another one. You will dedicate something to God. Well, how will you dedicate it to God? In truth. Right? Come on now. I know somebody's sitting there going, yes, I get it now. I get it. How do we make what we're doing legitimate? We make it legitimate by the truth. We make it legitimate by the word of God. You hear so many pastors that give you the instruction. If you can't find it in the word, then it's not true. Right? This is where we get this from. If you're not able to find the scripture that that legitimizes or blesses your business. If you're not able to find a scripture that legitimizes or unburdens or cleanses the action in which you're trying to take, then perhaps you're saying it wrong. You're misstating it. You're not understanding what your true purpose is for what it is that you are trying to do. Because we understand that when God consecrates something, when God sanctifies something, when God ordains something, then he makes it Thus and so, he makes it surely so that it will be able to um, last throughout time. So when we look at the word choice, and that's why 
And now I'm not knocking anybody, but this is why I share it with you in so many different translations, mm -hmm. because I don't want you to think that Jesus spoke Shakespearean English. Uh, okay? Yeah. I don't want you to, because sometimes that gets a little lost on people, and we think that Jesus spoke that way or that he sounded that way. He did not sound like that. That's just the version, the translation that has become the most popular with most of our churches. That is the, the, the canon that is acceptable. Now that we have more translations and including the Amplified, the Amplified takes all of the versions and gives us all of the words so that we are able to understand that this is exactly what this word means. It does all of the translating for us. So if you perhaps don't speak Hebrew, you don't speak Greek, unfamiliar with Aramaic, doesn't matter. You're able to read that version and understand fully what God is trying to tell us. So we are to sanctify those that we are sharing with. We as kingdom workers have been sanctified by the truth and we are supposed to move and work in that truth and that truth is the word of God. Let's go on to our next scripture. And our next scripture, we're looking at Acts 18, 9. Thank you so much for my hearts. We're looking at Acts 18, 9. Acts 18 and 9. Now, if you, we were just looking at John, you're just going to turn a few pages back towards the back of your Bible. And we're looking at Acts 18, 9, and it reads, One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision and told him, Don't be afraid. Speak out. Don't be silent. Let's read that again. One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a what? In a vision. Mm -hmm. And told him, Don't be afraid. Speak out. Don't be silent. Now that's the main portion of that, but let's go on just a little bit more and continue on to verse 10 because this is the rest of what Christ says. For I am with you and no one will harm you because many people here in this city belong to me. Mm. How reassuring is that? How reassuring is that? That Two things happened there. One, Paul had a vision. Had a vision. Now, what is the importance of the difference between a dream and a vision? A dream is something that tends to happen when you are your unconscious mind in your sleep state. A vision, however, tends to happen in your conscious mind in your awake state. Do you understand what I mean? So right now you're walking and talking and you're having a good time. And then all of a sudden, God gives you a vision okay. that you see with your mind's eye. You understand however it comes for you. For those who have prophetic visions, you understand what I mean? Sometimes it is an audible word that you hear, like we're having conversation. For some, it is just a knowing and an understanding. They see a picture. There is something that is... Um, uh, illuminated for them and it is usually for a particular person peoples or group mm -hmm. you lady stand in there this group this organization it is a word for a particular person a dream however again you are asleep mm -hmm. it comes to your unconscious mind mm -hmm. and it is as vivid as your dream mm -hmm. will ever be in a normal state plus like a thousand yeah okay but there there may be a word for a race of people or it may be for just one person. But a dream, you tend to be sleep. Vision, you tend to be awake. So Paul is, <clears throat> excuse me, Paul is in Corinth. And we know that he is about to go and preach and teach. And he's a little nervous. He's a little afraid because he understands that his life may be at stake, right? So in his hesitance, 
God does, the Lord does a very wonderful thing. He comes to him and he tells him, do not be afraid. Go on and speak out. Don't be silent. When we are silent people, when we are silent, we are working against our purpose in which God has given to us. Okay. You have to speak out. If you don't speak out, you may be keeping someone from their blessing. Okay. If you do not open your mouth, someone along the path, how we always pray, Lord, place people along my path that I can help. Lord, place the right person along my path that can help me. Well, if you hesitate, if you go off path, then you are delaying what that person needs to be receiving. You are delaying, therefore making God have to send somebody else. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. oh, you need to work in your purpose. You need to speak out and do not be silent. Mm -hmm. For I am with you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. God. I am with you. Not somebody else, but yeah. I am with you. And no harm will come to you. That alone, he could have stopped right there. No harm? Oh, thank you so much, Lord. Thank you for that. I know that no harm is going to come to me. But why is no harm going to come to me? Because many people, not just one, two, I have a, a sprinkling. Many people here in this city belong to me. So that's like saying, don't worry about being a church planter in this city or in this particular country or in this land or in this region, because I've already sent kingdom builders ahead of you. I already have someone that has gone there and taken care of all of the logistics. You are going to be okay. It is all going to be all right. What a beautiful way for God to be able to communicate to us through our dreams and through our visions. I'm going to give you one last one before we pray, and that is Jeremiah 29, 11. Many of us already know this one, but it is Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. Thank you so much to everyone who is on. Just doing a little housekeeping here. It looks like we had someone that, that was not doing something right there. Okay. Jeremiah 29, 11. And I'm going to read the, uh, the NIV, the, the NLT, and the King James Version. So here we go. I'll read the King James first because that's the one that most people are familiar with. And it reads, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected and one more time. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Not an unexpected end, but an expected end. Let's look at the New Living Translation. And the New Living Translation reads, thank you so much for my heart. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Now, my favorite version happens to be the, the NIV. So I'm going to read. That's why I'm reading that particular one last. And it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Can I read that one one more time? That one is my favorite. That one just really is my favorite. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. I'm fired up right there all by myself. For I know the plans I have for you. And when we say that, each and every one of us that reads that, it says for you. That means for me. For me, for me, for me, for me, for me. As Oprah would say, you get a declaration. You get a declaration. You get a declaration from the Lord. And that is an awesome thing because he has a plan for you, brother and sister. For you, saint. For you out there. Plans to what? Prosper you. Prosper you. Not to uh, just give you one particular way of prosperity, but to give you all abundance to prosper you when you are prosperous you want for nothing oh, yeah, and not yeah, to yeah, harm yeah. you that means that
that nothing is going to happen to you that will ultimately cause your demise. Do you understand? Because we live in a sinful world and God knows that things are going to happen to us simply because we are victims of sin. But the ultimate victory is, is that nothing will cause you to have an ultimate end because I have a plan and that plan is Jesus Christ. Right. So it does not matter yes. what may come towards you. As I wear my little pink ribbon right here, uh -huh. breast cancer tried to get me, but by the grace of God, right. I am Amen. still here because I am working in my purpose. I had to speak up and Amen. not be silent. Amen. So Amen. let's keep going. Amen. So plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you what? A hope. Oh, and a future, not just a hope, not just something that you blindly say, well, I hope it's going to come around. Let's see if it happens. No, you have a future. So in that hope, you know that not only is there a light at the end of the tunnel, but that you will see that light outside of the tunnel. Amen. I tell you what, this is my life scripture right here and I love it. And it just gets me fired up every time I hear it. This is something that we pray over our graduates. Uh, uh, every year and it really and truly is is a, a such a beautiful beautiful verse and everyone has a life verse for them that gets them fired up this just so happens to be it for me I love that God has a vision for my life I love that God has a purpose for my life and the beautiful thing is is that it's not just for me it's not just for me it is for each and every one of you it is for each and every one of you. It wasn't that he says, oh, I'm just going to single Angela out. No, he has a purpose for you no matter what your name is. And I just want you to say that at the end, God has a plan for me. God has a purpose for me. Yes, God loves me. That is awesome. That is awesome. If you carry nothing else throughout the day, just remember that God loves you. He has a hope for you. He will prosper you and he he will continue to move and work in your life. Amen. 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 I think now is such a wonderful time to pause. And I want to pray for all of our kingdom builders that we have out there. So you may be saying, well, what is a, kill, a, a kingdom a kingdom builder, though? What is a kingdom builder, uh, Pastor? And that is... That is someone who is working for the Lord. That is someone who is uh, working in the capacity of any form of minister. Be it that you are a senior pastor, you are a youth pastor, you're a singles ministry, you're an associate pastor, an assistant pastor, you are an elder or a deacon or a deaconess, you're a missionary, you are a nurse in the church. Whatever uh, capacity or title that you hold, you may be a Sunday school teacher, you are building the kingdom of God. Now, if you also work in the capacity of apostle or prophet, then you are kingdom building. And we are definitely praying for you. So that is what we are about to do right now. So if you would, please, let's prepare our hearts and our minds to come before the Lord and lift up our pastors and our kingdom builders before the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today with the heart of thanksgiving. Lord, we thank you for the gift of our life. Lord, we thank you that as we say here, that we made the wake-up list this morning. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the gift of our life, the ability to move and, and spend time with our families so that we can do those things that you would have us do. Lord, we also lift up to you those families that are still struggling as a result of the various hurricanes that have happened here in the United States. Lord, we lift up to you the people of Marseille, we lift up to you the people in Las Vegas. Lord, there has been so much harm done to the people around the world. Lord, we lift them up to you and we thank you for your blessing, for your comfort. We thank you for the pastors and the chaplains and the first responders that not only responded in their individual capacities, but responded in their Christian faith capacity. That they, they held the hands of those that were dying and they let them know that they were not alone. We thank you for those that gave last rites or prayed over those that were passing away. Lord, we thank you for those that had the mind to ask them had they received Jesus as their Lord and Savior, to give them the opportunity at eternal salvation. 
Lord, we thank you for those that are moving and working in your capacity that are doing what you have called them to do. Lord, we ask that as our pastors and our, our church leaders move, that they will continue to seek a clear and biblical vision for their churches, their ministries, and their organizations. Lord, we ask that each and every church be a true representation of what it means to be covered by the blood of the Lamb. Lord, we ask that your glory still move the way that it did in the time of the patriarchs, that it move now, and that revival touch all of our churches, Lord, that they touch not only the churches as, individ as an individual church, but they touch the people of the church, Lord, that we may take that revival out to those who need it. Lord, we ask that we continue to communicate with you, that we will be able to articulate the vision that you have given to us. Lord, we ask that as we dream the dreams that you have given to us, that we will share those dreams mm -hmm. and that we will be able to propel our people into a place that you would have us be. Mm -hmm. Lord, we ask that the visions that we have, Lord, that we will not be silent, but that we will share it with those that can help us move forward along your divine path. Yes, yes. Lord, we ask that we confidently, that we boldly, that we knowingly stand up for what is right and we call out those that are not behaving the way that you would have them behave. Lord, we ask that as a Christian family, that we remember that we are our brother and sister's keeper. Yes. Lord, we ask that as we move and we fellowship as one church, that we be reminded that we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, we ask that as we move today, that we will be reminded that your word says that we are the head and not the tail, that we are above only, and not beneath, mm -hmm. that we are sanctified, that we are redeemed, and that we have been called to a place as this, and that we will do and be the most glorious representative that you have here on this earth. Lord, we ask that as we move and we do that which you would have us do, that we, we remember that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, that we remember that we have his mind and that we are joint heirs with him, that you have blessed us with all the knowing, you have blessed us with all the understanding, and if we seek you first, then we will have this divine instruction with us at all times. We ask for this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, Another thing that I love to do is give a general scripture. Just in case we have those of you that have joined a little bit later in the program, you got to go back and, of course, watch the rebroadcast. I'd like to give you something that I call a general scripture. And that is something that, if again, if you missed anything else, then you will be able to take this with you. And you can find that at Matthew 7, 7 through 8. Matthew 7, 7 through 8 and I will be reading out of the New Living Translation Matthew 7 7 through 8 and as you are finding this I'm just going to take a moment again to not only introduce myself but to invite you my name is Dr. Angela Chester I'm a pastoral counselor and Christian life coach in the beautiful cities of downtown Long Beach California and in Hampton Virginia I am coming from you today thank you so much I am coming to you today from the beautiful, my home church, and that is Carver Memorial Presbyterian Church. We're located at 830 25th Street, where the Reverend Dr. Lawrence Willis is the senior pastor. On his behalf, I invite you to come down to any of our services that we have. We are in the chapel on Wednesdays from noon until 1. But Sunday service, is, there's an 8 o'clock service. Then we have, of course, Sunday school. That is at the 9.30, 9.45 hour. If you are here early, then of course you can come in and be a part of our fellowship breakfast that we have. And then the 11 o'clock, the main service is at 11 o'clock and it's until about 12.30, 1 o'clock. If you need a ride, if you want to participate and you need a ride, please feel free to call the church office. Again, we're at Carver Memorial Presbyterian Church at 830 25th Street. If you'd like to know more about me, uh, you can of course go to DrAngelaChester.com, Dr. Angela 
AngelaChester.com, but I teach the um, co-pastor uh, with Minister uh, Kenny Lucas, the young adults, the 18 to 25 year olds. So we're going to learn about adulting and what does it mean to be a young person, a millennial, and still believe in the word of God. Alrighty, so hopefully everyone has found our scripture and we're looking at Matthew 7, 7 through 8. Eight. So we are looking at effective prayer. So what does it mean? We have vision, but we also have to have some effective prayer. So what does that mean? And let's go on and read. Here we go. Keep on asking and you will be given what you ask for. Keep on looking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened. And the door will be opened. So we may know Excuse me, we may know that from the King James Version, which is which is worded a little bit differently, but I wanted to read it in the in the New Living Translation because as it goes on to read in verse 8, it says, For everyone who asks receives. Mm -hmm. Everyone who seeks finds. Mm -hmm. And the door is opened to everyone who knocks. Why is that important and why, why do we need to, to know that? So let's go back and look at verse 7. Keep on asking and you will be given what, you're at, what you have asked for. We know that there are so many uh, various parables and stories that are shared uh, with us throughout Scripture that give examples of someone going before the Lord and asking for something, going before God and asking for something. Um, and we know that persistence is key. If, you, if you've watched some of my other scopes, we know that consistency, I'm sorry, persistency will get you the something, but consistency is what allows you to keep that something. Be persistent in what it is that you want. So keep on asking, Lord, Lord, I petition you, I come before you, right? You keep asking, keep blessing me, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you for what you have given me. Keep on looking, keep seeking, and you will find. Do you want the love of Christ? Do you want eternal salvation? Well, you have found it in the word of God. Keep on knocking and the door will be open. I want you to knock like you the sheriff. I want you to <laughs> knock with authority. You know what I'm saying? And people used to laugh at me and say, you knock like the law. And I was like, because I want to come in. Boom, 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 boom. I want to get in. Hello, ding, ding, ding. Are you there? Everyone knows it's me, right? Everyone knows it's me. So keep on knocking and the door will be opened. So when we look at that from a, a business point of view, what does it say? If there are no open doors, then open a window. If there's no open window, then open a door. Make a door. Make a way, right? Because we know that we need to get to the other side. That The side that we're on on this side, in our natural selves, we know that we need to get on the other side, and that is our spiritual selves. That we need to have more of that. And how do we know that? How do we know that that's something that we need to do? And it goes on in verse 8. For everyone who asks, everyone who asks, that's right, keep on knocking. Everyone who asks will receive the prayers of the righteous, okay? So you have to make sure that you are praying for the correct thing and God will answer your prayer. Everyone who seeks finds. Everyone who knocks on that door, that door will be opened, the door will be opened. If we are persistent and we are consistent with what it is that we are supposed to do, boy, will we be blessed. Boy, will we be allowed to share in the magnificence that God has planned for us. And there is not only just joy waiting for us in heaven, but there is joy here on earth if we would simply open our eyes. That's right. If we would simply open our eyes and see what God has already given to us. I want to thank everyone for joining me on The Scope today. If you are watching this, if you are watching this on Periscope or Twitter, Facebook or Apple TV or perhaps on Roku or on YouTube, thank you so much for joining with me today. What I'd like to do now, because I understand it's almost 1 o'clock and many of you have to go back to lunch and I understand. For those of you who are able to stay for about 5 minutes longer, I would like to lift up our sick and shut in for those who need our prayers. If there is someone that you know you do not 
I, I respect people's privacy. You do not have to put their last names, but if you would like to put their first names or uh, where they are coming from, you know, it might be uh, uh, Lisa in Buffalo. Uh, if you want to do that, you're welcome to do that. And when we go back and watch this again, we will definitely um, include those people and pray for them again. Let's lift those names before the Lord. Lord, I lift before you Francis and Azalea, Roy C. and Dolores, Betty and Winston, Sandra and Joseph, Charlie and Janine, Jenny and Kim, Mary and Catherine, Jim and Mildred, Alfonso and Chandra, Helen and May, Bertha and Ethel, I believe the screen said a Joyce, Michael and Beverly, William and Lois, thank you, Pauline, David and Michael, thank you. Patricia and Anna, Richard and Lucinda, Margaret and Richard, and Melvin. Lord, we lift up to you the names of those that have passed on in Puerto Rico and their families. Lord, we lift up the names of the families of those that have passed away in Las Vegas. Lord, if there were any who passed away in Florida or in Texas, we lift up their families to you as well. Lord, thank you for sending your peace, your comfort to them, your healing, your grace, and your mercy. Amen and amen. Thank you everyone for joining me today amen. for Wednesdays in the Word. That's amen. right, in the Word on Wednesdays. Amen. I hope that you have enjoyed this particular uh, sharing of having biblical vision. We are here, we are here Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. That is 9 a.m. Pacific Time. I hope that you will be able to join me next week as well. If you're watching this on the rebroadcast thank you so much if you share this out on twitter thank you i will address you on twitter as well don't forget don't forget that god loves you that he is always there for you and he is just simply waiting for you to invite him into your life thank you so much everyone be a blessing to those that you meet today have a great day everyone bye-bye thank bye -bye. you for my hearts amen <laughs> thank you for oh.